Hi, good morning, all of you. Uh, myself, Dr. Shiv Kumar. I am working as a head of the department in civil engineering, in Jim's Engineering Management Technical Campus, in Greater Noida. Yeah, my previous lecture we have discussed about on stones, construction of stones, types of stones that we are using in construction purposes. So after that, now my topic of discussion is bricks. So brick is the basic fundamental unit of construction. A brick is a type of a block used to make walls, pavements, and other elements in masonry construction. Everyone have seen that bricks, this is the basic functional unit or basic units for the construction. There are so many ingredients which have to be present in a good quality of brick. The brick are the most common used construction material and it is prepared by clay in a rectangular block of uniform size. The, some of the major constituents of the brick are a like silica, alumina, lime, iron oxide and magnesia. These all contents, all ingredients, all constituents give some specific property or features to the brick. These are some images of different kinds of brick. Uh, first one is the conventional type of bricks. Second one is the modular type of brick and so on. These are some other different types of bricks and closures which are used for the specific purpose only. This is the size of a brick. A brick has the following dimension as it is mentioned in the figure, you can see. This, once again, the non-modular brick size, standard, engineer standards, closer standards. These are some more types of bricks for the specific purpose only. Now come to the different material or constituents which have to be present in the brick for a good quality of brick. The first one is the silica. So as far as the silica is concerned, so these are the phase and four basic properties that a silica add to the brick. The brick earth should contain about 50% of silica. It is responsible for preventing cracking, shrinkage, and wrapping of raw bricks. It is also affect the durability of bricks. If present in excess means more than 50% plus, then it destroys the cohesion part between particles and brick becomes brittle. So when we talk about the silica content, it gives, it provides the durability to the bricks. It provides, it contributes the strength. Next is the alumina. This is one more ingredient. Basic three properties are added by, being added by this alumina to the first class of brick. A good brick earth should contain about 20 to 30% of alumina. It is responsible for plasticity, characteristics of earth, which is important in molding operation. If present in excess, then the raw brick shrink and wrap during drying. Means, if the alumina 30% beyond chala jata hai quantity mein, to kya hota hai? when we are drying, we are trying to drying the bricks, it becomes twisted. It twists, deformed, it loses its shape. The next one is the lime. This is again one of the important constituent of the brick. There are four big properties of this lime. The percentage of lime should be in the range of five to 10%. It prevents shrinkage of bricks on drying. It causes silica and clay to melt on the burning, thus helps to bind it. Excess of lime causes the brick to melt and brick loses its shape. Many of times what we see, 
some during the cooking or baking or heating or burning of the brick some bricks lose their shape comes twisted or like melted that is because of the lime when lime is in excess it allow or it forced to melt the brick and lose their shape while burning or cooking of the bricks the next one is the iron oxide again one of the important constituent of brick a good bricker should contain at least 7 to 5 to 7 percent of iron oxide it gives red color to the bricks the iron oxide not only in the brick but also in the cement it contribute the color it improves impermeability and durability it gives strength and hardness to the brick mainly this iron oxide is responsible for the strength contribute the strength properties to the brick the last one is the magnesia it has these four properties good brick are, should contain less a small quality quantity of magnesia about 1% magnesium in brick earth imparts yellow tint to the brick it is responsible for reducing shrinkage then last one excess of magnesia leads to the decay of brick these all the constituents should be available in the bricks just to improve its strength just to protect from the shrinkage just to maintain their shape these ingredients are required now the harmful ingredients in brick which are lime the yeah, lime was in that good constituents but also considered as the harmful ingredients because excess of lime allow the brick to melt iron pyrites alkalis pebbles vegetation and organic matter when we prepare clay it it should be free from the any type of pebbles vegetation and organic matter but what they contribute is a harmful ingredient they contribute the fluorescence and they can make the brick brittle like if you see in the image first image you will see that some white colors appears on the surface of bricks this is called efflorescence when we cure the brick or when we saturate the brick wall after the masonry work what happens the these materials harmful materials alkalis pyrites these are present in the soil which get dissolved and appears on the surface of the brick this is called efflorescence in the next figure we are seeing that there is a pebble white color pebble which is embedded in the brick that makes the brick brittle the brick is not able to sustain or not able to take the required load during the mason now the next topic is manufacturing of brick how the bricks are being manufactured what are the process involved in the brick manufacture there are four types of methods or steps which are being involved in that preparation or manufacturing of brick the first one is the preparation of clay second one is the molding third one is the drying and the last is burning so how we prepare the clay what are the basic steps involved in the preparation of clay how we mold that how we dry that these are the basic process and how we burn that so in the next slide you will see the images of preparation of clay in first image you are seeing that a person is mixing that water in the soil and made it clay in the second image the person is kneading the clay 
by their feet in third image molding like kneading by hand fourth image is the molding and demolding and last one is the trying so these are the basic step involved in the preparation of clay then first one is the unsoiling second one is the dicking then cleaning followed by weathering blending and tempering so what is unsoiling the unsoiling is the process of removing the uppermost crust or uppermost layer of the soil which contains the waste material like plant material plant residues plant dead material the roots of the grasses which is available in the top layer of the soil that lies up to the 200 mm in depth after that removal of that surface ya yeah, upper crust the digging process is there the clay is then dug out from the ground and is spread on the ground just to make it is around 600 to 1200 ml then we filter it from the seed we clean it by manual process and make the soil or make the clay clean from the any type of residue or the troublesome material which can cause the problem in making of brick the next is the weathering the clay is then exposed to atmosphere for softening and mellowing the period varies from few weeks to full season the next one is the blending the clay is made loose and any ingredients to be added to it is spread out at its top in the blending we just mix up the soil material which is required a essential part of the just to mix the ingredients present in the soil and the next is the tempering in the process of tempering the clay is brought to the proper degree of hardness and is fit to the next operation of molding kneading or pressed under the feet of man or cattle as i have shown in the previous slide in the figure the clay is kneaded by the head and foot manually and make a homogeneous mass of the clay just to prepare or just for the molding the next process is the molding of the clay the molding involves all two types like hand molding and machine molding in the previous time or the villages you can see on the brick field the hand molding is in was in the practice the person take the mold of wood uh, that is made up of metal or wood the clay is filled in that tapping person can tap that just to remove the air voids scratch or remove the excess part of the clay from the mold and then followed by demolding on the ground after the demolding the brick is allowed to dry in the sun or by air the next one is the machine molding there is nothing to say in that because everything is done by the machine only the machine take the clay we just feed the clay into the machine and machine automatically mold and demold and then final product and sometimes the machine itself dry the brick and give the product for the perfect the next process involves the drying the damped bricks are if we burn or bake the damped bricks then it may cause the crack and lose their strength so first let the brick should be dried and the moisture content should be at least 2% only then we should burn the bricks so bricks are being arranged in the such manner which are shown in the figure we should let it be dry for 2 3 days or 
for a week depending upon the sunlight depending upon the air so this is about the topic which i have discussed in that the next topic for the discussion will be burning of bricks after the drying we just go for the burning of the bricks this will be the next topic of our next lecture so till then thanks for your patience thanks for listening carefully patiently thank you